Hello there everybody and welcome to my video. I'm going to tell you something about one of my favorite insects, which is the silk moth from the genus Lobobunea. Here in my hand I'm holding a male of the Lobobunea Christi. This is a silk moth uh, that's found in Africa. This particular livestock comes from Ghana. And here I'm holding a beautiful male. He has rather reddish purplish, beautiful and intensely colored eye spots on his hind wings. And here on the background we see a female. This is the female of the Lobo Binea Christi. And here we see some subtle differences in coloring and size. The female is bigger, but she has rather light and pinkish eye spots. While the male has rather dark ones. Red color is also a little bit different. But what's also cool is I'm having great success with breeding them because here over here we have some sweet gum tree and if we look closer on the sweet gum well we see their babies. Trying to get some good close-ups here. Oh there we go. So if, let's take a look under this leaf. So here we have many of them. These are babies of the exact same species that I'm showing here. Lobobunea Christi. And here we have even more of them. And why do I have so many of them? Well, it's because this is an excellent year for breeding them. Oh, look, there we go. They're all doing quite well. Caterpillars are going to become very big, actually. These are just tiny, tiny babies. Of course they are going to become very big moths, just like their parents. And if we look some more, we see some uh, more individual caterpillars here. So all in all, here I am demonstrating some great success with this species. And why am I so successful this year? Well, the conditions of the weather in the Netherlands have been very, very unusual this year. Um, we are in currently in a record-breaking heat wave. Whoa, the bottle just fell over. Let's put it upright. I don't want all the water to run out. Then I have to fill it again. There's water in the bottle, which keeps the food plant fresh, so I don't have to change it every day. So let's tell you some uh, fun things. First of all, we are inside a record-breaking heat wave in the Netherlands. Recently temperatures have gone over 35 degrees Celsius and not only for one day but for, m for multiple days and it's just insane how hot this year has been it's like a tropical summer really not something you would expect from my country the Netherlands however these African species are completely loving it and usually I had I, had, I struggled with pairing these kind of moths I mean these African uh, giant silk moth, especially the Bune, Buneini uh, subtribe. I know that's a strange scientific term I just told you there, but if you know your silk moths, Buneini are the ones related to Bunea, like Bunea alkino, or maybe you know Gonimbrasia, or Nudaurelia, or Pseudobunea, or Lobobunea, etc. etc. They are all relatives of each other. Includes a few very cool ones like Aurifilius that I have yet to breed. And generally, I find these types of silk moths very difficult to pair because you really they don't want to they don't want to mate inside breeding cages. But because of these high temperatures, I've had multiple pairings. Really, I've, I'll even show you a picture of this couple here in this video that's pairing. And for me that's very unusual and I really blame the high temperatures because of this. Well, the moths are also very active because of the heat. Here we have an old moth and it's not looking that pretty anymore. I know this looks quite sad but this happens naturally as the moths grow old. They don't live that long. And because they are so active because of the heat, well, they uh, tear out. Is that bad? No, it's not. It's a natural process and they are still able to pair and reproduce in captivity. This is the breeding cage that I keep them in. 
And let's just take one little look in here. You see all the white eggs here? See this? These are all eggs of my Lobobinea, the species that I'm filming in this video. Which means there will be even more babies. There will be a ton of them really. And I'm really excited for this. Because the species has always been on top of my to-do list for years. And now suddenly I'm having really great success. So that makes me very happy guys. So I'm going to share my success with you and just going to give you some breeding tips and instructions. And apparently the adults of this species like being really warm and hot. That's a really good thing. So I guess if you struggle with pairing them, my guess is maybe your house is too cold. I'm going to go put them back now so they can do that. I have more males and females hatching every day. I have quite a few pupa of them and next year I will have even more because I'm raising so many caterpillars. See it's wow it's just a beauty. Incredible moth. Whoa. Let's try and escape. Better put it back here see the old one. And here I've captured. Underside is also pretty nice to look at. Although it's devoid of colors it's nice to see their gray camouflage patterns. Well you go back there. Now if you want to raise the caterpillars like this, there's a few basic things you need to know. It's not difficult actually. The most difficult is finding good food plants for them because they don't like all the, all the plants that are growing here in Europe. One good option for them is sweet gum, where the scientific name is liquid umber. They also really like several kinds of cherry, uh, aka prunus. I said several kinds, but definitely not all kinds. Do not give them laurel cherry, for example. Don't give them prunus laurocerasis, but rather other kinds of prunus. Preferably, preferably the didicuous ones. They also like ligustrum, as in privet, the kind of stuff that makes up your hedge. I'm not kidding, they like it. And they will also feed on oak. Oak tree. Scientific name, Quercus. Come on. Oh, I really hate this when my camera refuses to zoom and just stop making blurred images, please. Such one of my pet peeves. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. As you can see, the caterpillars are social. They live together in a big, big group. But this changes when they grow older. In a few weeks the caterpillars will turn green instead of yellow. And from that point they want to be alone. And they will not like being in big groups. So I will have to divide them in smaller cages. Thank you for watching. I hope I've educated you a little. And if you're lucky enough to have eggs or pupa of Lobobindea. Now you know the secret to breeding them. Bye bye.